Welcome back to another edition of Bully Ballistics. This is a catch and cook, and it is a catch and cook of the Mighty Octopus. So what we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna roll on the clips. Um, first of all, of me creating the pots, which is my own design, and then we're gonna get out there and catch a couple. So you're gonna see all that, so let's go. All right, guys, so here we go. Here's the double shelter. So I bolted them together. We've got a rope which holds it all together, and that'll also be a rope which we will attach to the line, which we'll see at the end. So basically, concrete's now going to be poured into opposite ends, and that should weigh it down nicely on the ocean floor so the octopus can go in, find shelter, and then we just pull them up. So, all right, on to the next part pouring the concrete. I've put in the concrete. So you can see there, it's about 80 to 100 mil of concrete in the bottom. That's going to give it a good ballast. Um, and because I've made them, this is my own design, where I put them opposite ends, it should hold it flat. Because I think when they do singulars, um, the actual it actually floats around um, because there's concrete only on one end. So this should hold it flat on the bottom. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get a few ockies. We've got to let this set for a day, flip them to the other side, and then... Um, yeah, we'll chuck on the uh, roping them up. So there we go. So we have got the line tied. So what we basically have is a weight at one end and then it goes through and it has one of these stringers tied on every three meters. So we have one of those. And then we've got some floats on the end. We make sure we've got enough line to go from the bottom of the ocean to the top. So I've ran uh, 18 meters there, but I also have a weight on it to keep the rope down in the water so people don't cut it off with their propellers or hit it in their boat. And we've got our two floats on top with our ID. And um, yeah, we're ready to go. So Alright guys, so as you can see we only caught one octopus, but I did have another one in the freezer which we caught when we were fishing recently. So we've got uh, the big one here that I caught when we were fishing recently. And this is the little fella that we caught. I've got him on ice there to keep him fresh. Obviously with seafood, keep it on ice, keep it fresh. And I'm just going to prepare this one so you can see how we prepare it. So first, first of all, we've got the head there. So we can see the head, we're going to dispatch of the head, chop that off. Put that egg and keep that for bait or whatever you want to do with it. And then what I'm going to do is pop out the little beak, which we can see there. And you can just pull that off. Now that's his little beak. Quite an interesting thing. It's like a little cocky beak. They can actually bite you with that if they wanted to. 
But anyway, that's all we need to do. So he is now prepared. So in the pot he goes. I'm just going to wash my hands quickly, get that smell off, and then we're going to salt it. All right, let's go. Organise myself a little bit here. So here we go. So what we want, table salt, just cooking salt, the cheap stuff. And what we do is we put around half a cup of salt in there. Okay, we put that on there. Lay that down, and then we mix it all up with our hands. And then we let that sit for five minutes. We're going to have five minutes magical camera time. We're going to be back in a second. All right, guys, so that's five minutes magical camera time. What we're going to do, we're going to add around two to three litres of water to this. Obviously, you leave the salt in there as well. So we've just rubbed them in salt. And now we're adding the water so we can cook them. So what we want to do is obviously have enough to boil them without boiling dry. All right, so we're going to put them on the hot pan, the hot plate, and we're going to crank that up. Now, why we use cold water is we want to bring it from a cold to a boiling, and then we're going to simmer it. So we're going to drop it down then once it starts to boil, and we're going to drop it down and simmer it for one hour. And then we're going to come back. So lucky for you, magical camera time again. Let's go. All right, guys, so it's been one hour and the octopus is all cooked. So we're going to pull it out of the cooker. So it's been simmering for an hour. And this is what it looks like. Not very appetizing, to be honest, to start with. But we'll pull them both out so they cool down so I can cut them up. And what you'll be left with in there is just some purple, dirty looking water. And, um, but... That's the way it is. So the octopus is now cooked. So what we're going to do now, there's two options here. What you can do if you want to, you get a clean scouring pad. You can actually scour off this purple skin or you just leave it on. For me, I just leave it on and I find that um, there's no problem with it at all. So all right. So what we're going to do, we're going to get our knife. We're going to get our jar. So this is my pickling jar. It's a big old jar. So what I'm going to do here is basically start chopping it up into small pieces. And what we want to do is basically chop it into your bite-sized pieces. Not too big, just bite size, just like that, into the jar. And then we're going to start chopping. And I'm going to chop this whole thing up into pieces that are no bigger than around one to two centimetres long. And then we're going to put it in the jar. So let's go. All right, guys, so what we'll do here, I'm just going to show you quickly as we slice this part up. Now, as with all of them, we've already removed the beak. So what we're going to do is just slice through and just slice these eight legs up so then we can slice them into small pieces again. Now, we leave the suckers on. The suckers, you might, if you do not like them, then probably don't eat octopus or you can strip them off. It's a bit of work. I don't worry about it, I just chew them down. So, and you'll find most of the stuff in the shops has also got the suckers on because no one's gonna sit there and peel those off. All right, so let's keep them cutting into these small pieces and then we're gonna put it on the jar. All right, guys, so we have got this all cut up now. It's all ready to go. So we're gonna put it straight in to the jar. Still hot and ready to go. So obviously you could do probably a lot more. We've only got, we didn't do too well on this octopus hunt, I'll be honest. Um, but at the end of the day, that's still going to be a nice little feed there. So to be, ideally, if we had a few, maybe four or five octopus, you could fill a full jar full of that. So you can see why it does cost a bit when you buy this stuff from the shop because it takes quite a few octopus to make a decent jar. All right, so, so we've got our jar now. And what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to add, there's, three oil, there's two oils and one vinegar. So what we're going to do is 250 mils of each. So we're going to start with the oil and we're going to go with the vegetable oil. And we're going to have 250 mils of vegetable oil. 
So we're going to add that straight in there. Okay, so that's vegetable oil, 250 mils. Then we're going to go to olive oil. So we've got ourselves a nice extra virgin olive oil. It's probably going to take forever to fill up. Alrighty, so approximately another 250 mil of your olive oil. And then we're going to go with this white wine vinegar. So we're going to go the same amount as well, 250 mils. So it's 250 mils of each. All right, so 250 mils of the vinegar there. White wine vinegar, any, any type, doesn't matter. All right, so now we're going to go garlic. Now, normally you'd use three cloves of garlic. Me personally, I'm just going to use this. It's not a crushed garlic, but it's a minced garlic. So it's large pieces. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons of that in there. It's not going to matter because you're not going to eat that anyway later on, but it's going to have that flavor. All right, and now we're going to add a tablespoon of chili flakes. So we'll get that. So there's chili flakes, tablespoon of them in there. And a tablespoon of oregano leaves. Oregano, oregano, wherever you come from. Australia, it's oregano in my opinion. So in there, one tablespoon of that. All right. Now we've had a bit of an issue, guys. Generally, we would use a lemon, a freshly squeezed lemon, and we'll take the rind off it as well. So we'd grate the rind, add the rind with the lemon juice from that one lemon, and put the rind and the lemon juice in there as well. We're right now, we're going to believe it or not, we've got a shortage of lemons in Western Australia. So we're just going to use the old lemon juice, um, which is going to be okay. And I'm guesstimating that'll be one lemon's worth, but it's not ideal. But anyway, such is life. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now, we're going to give it a bit of a shake. Hope from the old jar doesn't leak too much. There we go, and look at that. So that's gonna sit there, that's gonna pickle. Now what we're gonna do with that, that's gonna sit in the fridge for two to three weeks. I would suggest three weeks, just to get that flavor through it. And that is gonna be some of the tastiest octopus that is pickled you will ever eat. I guarantee you that. What I'm gonna to do today, because I'm not gonna wait two to three weeks to get this out and test it. So I'm gonna get a piece out now. And I'm going to have a little bit of a taste test. Just a small bit. There we go. Look at that. Freshly cooked. Ready to go. Go try it. Oh, you know what? It's actually good right now. So I can only imagine in two to three weeks, this is going to be perfect. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. Two to three weeks in the fridge. And I ask you guys if you'd like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And I love yous. And I'll see you in the next episode. See ya. Whoosh.